everyone. Welcome. It's great having you here. I'm making something <laughs> and I wanted to bring you along. Perhaps this is nothing truly original, but I'm going to add my own twist to it and I think it's something that is so effective that I wanted to share it with you all. This is something you can make yourself very easily or you can look at what I'm offering <laughs> in my shop when we're done here. So, to this recipe, well, let me explain what the recipe's for. This isn't just a toilet cleaner. You'll see a lot of videos on how to clean toilets, um, basically making bath bombs that you throw on the toilet. Uh, and the ingredients vary slightly. Um, however, I'm adding uh, sort of a soapy oaks twist to this by switching up some ingredients for things that I know that work in various different scenarios. Matter of fact, I'm gonna give you an example of how to clean a very grody coffee pot. And it's not one that I grodied up. This is one I picked up already grodied <laughs> just for this example, so I could show you how this would work, all right? The recipe is actually very simple. Two parts baking soda, one part citric acid, one part boric acid, or borax, I said boric acid. I am so sorry, borax, not boric acid. I apologize, one of those days. And here one part apple cider vinegar powder. That's right, this is apple cider vinegar that has been dried and in powder form. Some of my, now I'm using my Soapy Oaks Farm, uh, Castile soap, uh, scented with lemon, because lemon is great, I think, for all kind of cleansing um, concoctions, whether it be soap that we use to clean in the kitchen or things, scrubbing up dishes, whatever you're doing or cleaning things outside. Lemon is great for cutting through grease and it smells great. And I think it's such a refreshing scent. So we're gonna be using lemon uh, essential oil in my kind and clean, but you could use any liquid soap. You could use liquid dish detergent that you buy at the grocery store. If you're making this yourself, I try to keep this as clean and as natural as possible using ingredients that I know are safe, but you can make this however you choose or prefer. So we're gonna start out with, I, I like to sift everything so that it's in a, um, it's in the smoothest possible form for putting into our uh, molds, but uh, there's my baking soda, my citric acid. Now the citric acid sometimes doesn't go through so well because it's larger, um, larger particles, but I'm gonna put in our borax. And you know, I remember as a kid when we drove through parts of Southern California, the huge borax fields there, you would just see it, all these white fields of it, right? And it, now I'm just going to sift it all together here. It does make a cloud. Make sure you're wearing protection for your eyes. And your lungs. For these larger chunks, I like to just break them up a bit. Now, I'm not worried about these some of these larger particles because quite frankly, this isn't a bath bomb. You're not going to be using this in the tub. You're gonna be using this to clean, whether it be your toilets or other things in the home, all right? So now we need to make it moldable. So to this, I'm going to add a couple of squirts, like so, and then blend it together. Mmm, that lemon is so refreshing.
almost there. I'm going to get to put just a few more squirts in. That smells delicious. <laughs> I just love lemon essential oil. It reminds me of good times. As a kid, didn't, I don't know about you, do you, do you just love lemon sorbet? Oh, I sure do. All right, I think that is well mixed. It's now holding together. So I'm just packing this right into my little moon cake molds here. Go a little bit more there. I like to get it good and hard. Just like you're making shower steamers or bath bombs. Isn't this simple? Something you can do right at home very easily yourself. Of course, you're going to wonder why would you do this? Um, you already have things that you can clean your toilet with and clean uh, some of your other hard to clean things with. And that's fine. This is just another option. Something very that you can make from things you can pick up at the supermarket. Um, I, I just happen to think that it is a tremendous recipe that works really well. Oh, it, my twist on it is the apple cider vinegar. Um, I find that that not only helps to add to the little bit of the fizzy disc, because well, just think about it. Remember those volcanoes we made as kids, the science experiments using baking soda and vinegar? Well, same sort of process. Here, of course, we have citric acid in here to add that fizz, but we're also going to have that reaction between the baking soda and the vinegar once it hits water. Now, you could do, you could alternately put these in dissolvable bags, which I've done in other videos with different things. You can make this to your own liking. This is to my liking. Keep a jar of these on the back of your commode. They're quite attractive. You just want to make sure your guests know what they're for so they don't throw them in the tub and use them as a bath bomb. It wouldn't hurt them. There's nothing in here harmful, but it's not going to be the same kind of pleasant that you might get from a <laughs> nice bath bomb with Borax is completely harmless to most folks, unless you have some kind of aversion or an allergic reaction to it. But the same with any ingredients, of course. Uh, you know, be careful, pay attention to the ingredients of the things that you buy, that you make, um, that you use. Know what things you're allergic to. You know, I've often thought those commercials on television for different medicines, you know, they will go, don't take this medicine if you're allergic to it. Who would? <laughs> you have to wonder that. They'll say, use our medicine. Um, you know, soapy oaksin. <laughs> don't use if you're allergic to soapy oaksin. <laughs> right? So it's just funny to me. It's like, are there people that know they're allergic to it and would go ahead and use it anyway? I suppose maybe there's some, you know, desperate folks who may think, I know I'm allergic to that, but the benefits of it hopefully override my allergic reaction. <laughs> that doesn't sound like it would be the best decision, but anyway, I've often laughed at commercials and the things. They assume that we're all not very bright people sometimes, you know, sort of like with medicines and things where it says, keep away from children. 
Well, naturally, it's going to help your headache to keep away from children. Ha, ha, ha. No, I know they mean keep the medicine away from children. I'm being silly. Okay. So we're almost done here. And then I'm going to show you how these work and how well they work. Alrighty, so let me clean up here. I'm gonna let these dry out a little and then we're gonna put them to the test. Alright, so I don't know if you I wanna be you'd be able to see the staining in this or not. It's kind of hard to tell on this camera. I'm trying to get the right angle so you can see all of that gun down on the bottom. I have washed this actually out with just some hot soapy water just to make sure there was no residue, but it's still, it is a filthy coffee cup. I tried not, uh, coffee pot, I tried not to do any kind of scrubbing on the actual staining down on the bottom. Can you see that all along in here? That brown staining? And that is in there good, and that's because, well, you know, coffee has oils and things in it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and this one isn't even hard yet. It's still kind of soft, but just for this example, I just want to show how this would work. I'm just going to drop it in and add some hot water and let it do its thing. And it's really going to bubble, bubble, bubble there. So I'm going to, oh, so I'm going to stir it to break up some of those bubbles. seems to be working. We might get a little overflow, but hey, that's okay. This is the good, this is a good kind of volcano. It's just good old ingredients that are good for us, and hey, they'll be good for my slate counter too. They're not going to hurt a thing here. So, yep, we are like giving our coffee pot a bath of soapy goodness here. We have, of course, our kind and clean soap. We have the baking soda, the citric acid, the apple cider vinegar, and the borax just doing their work in there. And I'm not going to do any scrubbing. I just want to see what, show you what that will do. And you kind of have to think about, this is a dirty toilet. <laughs> We're going to go with that analogy. And of course it isn't, but yeah. So I'm also going to, I'm going to go get some clear water because we're going to want to rinse this out in a minute and take a look at it. And because I don't want to take it away. I want you to see it exactly as it happens. So I'm going to try not to edit the tape at all here and just show you what it does. So I'm just going to let this continue to, as you can see, the bubbling, the action has broken down. I already see something there. Um, but we're just going to give it a bit more of a stir here. And the lemon smell is tremendous. That lemon essential oil is just lovely in this mixture. Now, what's hard to see is the color of the water under there, but can you see there's brown water? I'm trying to just clear the, see how the water is kind of murky brown? That's a good sign. That means it is doing exactly what we want it to do. And this is without doing any scrubbing, without doing any kind of extra work on this, other than just letting the process happen here. So I'm going to get a bowl. I'm just going to go get that now. I'm not, I'm not going to leave the premise here because I want to keep this as clear as it can be.
So I'm just giving it some more swirlies here. Now, of course, if you were using this in your toilet or something like this, you wouldn't have to do this, but since I've got this little pot here, and also this is, again, coffee has a lot of oil in it. Um, you know, it comes out of the beans, and so that's what causes that stickiness and that kind of crustiness in our pots, especially if you were letting, um, you're cooking that onto the glass. All right, so let's see what we've got here. So let me wipe that, hang on, let me wipe this real quick. I just want to show you exactly what I'm doing here, okay? So I'm going to pour the water. Isn't that nasty looking? Right, and I'm going to take the paper towel here. I'm just going to take this paper towel and just wipe out the inside a bit. We are going to come back and rinse it, but I just wanted to wipe it out a bit. Now what you, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this or not, let me just dry it out a bit here. Now the outside is filthy too, it's like there is muck. You can see under that ring, that metal ring on the outside here, that's a whole different situation. I'm just showing what it does to the inside. Do you remember here on the bottom, in here, all of that brown that was there? I'm not saying this is clean, it's nasty. <laughs> like I said, I just did a mild rinse of it when I brought it here. This was from an old office uh, that a friend of mine had, and I remembered the old coffee pot sitting there. It's been closed for two years, and this was just sitting in there. So I knew it would be mucky and nasty, and it was. But can you see that all of that brown oily muck that was along here is gone. See? So, uh, my point is, if it can do that, it can clean most anything that's in your toilet too. Um, it will act as a disinfectant and break down a lot of material that can be there and I won't get gross or anything about that. Now, I want to show you something else. So for this, I'm going to have to walk away for just a moment. Actually, I'll go ahead and take this away. We're done with that. And I want to show you something. I came into possession to with several of these and thought I would just share them with you all. It is a bristle, natural bristle and beechwood toilet brush. Or but it doesn't have to be a toilet brush. It can be a brush for cleaning down inside glasses or inside vases. It'll fit down inside your PVC pipe molds that you want to clean. You can use this for, like I said, for cleaning a glass, getting down in there and cleaning. So it serves multiple purposes. It's natural, it's biodegradable in your garden. And they're just six bucks on my channel. You can find them elsewhere on the internet, but I'm offering them for you. So if this is something you're interested in, it's what I use. I've got one of these in my every bathroom, but I've got two in my kitchen too, and I use them in the kitchen. Yes, it's called a toilet brush, but <laughs> at least for this purpose. But it can be used for cleaning multiple different things. So they're really, it's a good bargain. Uh, and I ship these in a biodegradable bag. If you order just this, it comes in a biodegradable bag, goes first class mail. So pretty inexpensive. And you're doing something good for the environment. You're replacing an old plastic one. Um, and I just keep mine inside a terracotta pot in the bathroom. So you can use whatever you have or want or get something else to use. But I, I just think that they're great little tools. It's all natural. And I do have those. So 
I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. It was a lot of fun for me to put together for you. If you liked it, please like the, like the video, subscribe, leave a comment. I'd appreciate it. Please have a terrific day, everyone, and I'll see you back soon. Goodbye.